Mackenzie from the Literacy Teacup. I am currently a second grade teacher in Northern California, but I'm getting ready to move into a position as a reading interventionist for next school year. With the change of position is coming a move in classrooms. So before I get all packed up, I wanted to take a little time to give you a tour of my current second grade classroom, explain some of the things that are working really well and ones that aren't working quite as well, and just give you an honest view of what a classroom looks like at the end of May. Let's get started. My students see when they walk in is our little affirmation mirror. They can remind themselves of all the wonderful things that they are. Also on our back wall, we have these neat little hooks. These used to be where we hung our backpacks, but they've actually added backpack hooks out in the hallway. So now we put our little book bags with the Dakota readers in them and the kids can take them home each night and then hang them here in the morning. Also on our back wall, we have some of the secret stories hung up and I have some other ones another place. These are really nice for reminding students of some of the phonics rules that they've already learned or giving an introduction to ones that you haven't taught yet as they kind of pop up um, in their reading. So I, I like those as a tool for that. We also have this system for storing our headphones. This is one of my favorite systems. I've used it all four years and I really like it because the kids can just shove the whole headphone set and the cord in these little shoe organizer pockets and they don't have to actually wind the cord around the headphones, which can be kind of tricky for little hands to do. This system here with these hooks is another system I've really liked. I'm not gonna get too close because there are student names on those cards, but they have their name on the front and then on the back, they have their little QR code for Clever. If you're not familiar with Clever, it's a program that stores all of their logins and passwords for the computers. So once they've scanned that one QR code, then they're able to log into everything else. Also on our back wall, we have our student center and this is where our Chromebooks are stored. So I keep the Chromebooks in these little like magazine holders and then all of the cords are just in these baskets back here. I would give this system like a five out of 10. It's not my favorite. Um, it's worked okay for this year. In the past, I had a laptop cart or a Chromebook cart and that seemed to work a little bit better even though it took up more space. So the trouble with this system is that I have three sets of Chromebooks and one set has some different cords. So not only do we rotate them through which are plugged in, but then I have to rotate the cords through being plugged into the one outlet. So I don't know, not the most efficient, but it's worked for this year. Also back here in my student center, I have our mailboxes. So as kids finish up their work, they go ahead and just slide it into their mailbox. If there's something I need to grade, then I put it there later. And on Fridays, they take their folder out of their B binder, put the, everything from their mailbox inside, and then take it home just one day a week. So I've really liked this system. It seems to work pretty well. Right above our mailboxes, I have the little cards with our class jobs on them. I had intended to write their names on popsicle sticks and just slide them in so the tops of these are open to slide the popsicle stick in. To be really honest, I never got around to that and we kind of haven't been super consistent with these jobs anyway. In first grade, I was really good about class jobs, but in second grade, everybody kind of just pitches in and we kind of get things done together. I also have the school breakfast and lunch menus there if kids want to look at those. So at our school, we are super lucky to have not only a drinking fountain in our room so that we don't have to have water bottles, which is awesome, but we also have a ton of storage along this back wall. So this was something that I did not have at my previous school. And so it's been really nice to have places to put all of my stuff. Up top is actually the teacher that's going to be in here next year. I started bringing some things in. So, but all of those cabinets have curriculum, art supplies, um, teacher things, and it's been really nice to store it all in there. Over in this corner, I have some of our little treats like jelly beans and other just little behavior incentives. This is a bucket of supplies that kids get to use on their birthday. So it has like some special sparkly markers in it and things like that. We also have our first aid, which is band-aids, masks, all of that, Kleenex. And this is also where our lost and found is. So I would highly recommend having some sort of lost and found in your classroom. It prevents the kids that wanna say like, I found a Lego, I found a coin. Just put it in the lost and found and then you can sort it all out when you have a chance. 
I also keep some of just like my teacher books over here, cleaning supplies. And then back in this corner, we have our cool down spot. So the cool down spot is just a place for kids to go if they need some time away from the rest of the group. They can self-select to go over here if they need to, or sometimes they are voluntold to go over here if they are making a series of poor choices. So if I tell them to come down to this cool down spot, then they will follow these steps where they set the timer, think about what choice they made, and they may be asked to fill out a little think sheet what choice did you make? How are you feeling? What would be a better choice for next time? And I really haven't had to use that this year very much, um, but it's nice to have that space away from the rest of the group if you do end up needing it. The other thing we have back here is our sticker chart. So I just have this pocket chart from the Target Dollar Spot and in all of the pockets, there are some little stickers off of Amazon. These have been an awesome incentive for kids to bring their book bags and bee binders every day. So like I said, when the kids come in, the first thing they do is hang their book bags here on these hooks. And then as they are coming in, I am actually checking on my little checklist here to see if they brought their stuff. So if they did, they get a circle. If not, I put a little slash through the day. And then this makes it really easy to see which kids are present and absent that day as well. At the end of the week, if they have all of their days circled, then they get to come back here and pick a sticker from the sticker club chart. Next to the back door, I have my teacher space. So this is one of my two small group tables. This is the one that I typically use. And then over here on the other side of the room, there is another one that we have an aide that comes in during our reading centers and she'll sit here. Back behind my small group table is where I keep all of my teacher stuff. So we have some little sand trays there. These Class JoJo coupons, these are from Mrs. Call's Campers. These have been awesome. And then I just have some like Dakota readers stored down here. My teacher toolbox is stored down here behind my table and backpack, just all of my stuff. This is definitely the area in my classroom that will get messy the quickest. I store a lot of like curriculum, assessments, records, student records, things like that in these binders right here. And then I have my computer and planner and stuff right there on that little table. So this has worked pretty well to have like my own little space here and then the small group table where I can pull kids. Right next to the small group table, I keep my little cart with all of my small group stuff on it. So on the bottom here, I just have some little fun reading tools like some wands and these magnet wands, witch fingers, which are fun if you're trying to get kids to point to the words, and then these little eyes that they can wear on their fingers as well. These little hanging offy things came from Ikea and they work really well with these Michaels carts for holding smaller stuff. So in these, I keep our whiteboard markers and erasers, these little vowel tents that we made recently with one of my groups, and then these boards. So this is probably my favorite thing that I have for small group right now. They're called Scylla boards and they're from Really Great Reading. And I think they're intended to be used that kids write like one syllable per board and then read the whole word. But honestly, we use these for just about everything in our small groups because I like that they encourage the kids to write a little bit smaller and neater. We've also used chalkboards this year for wet dry try to practice our letter formation. I have some magnet letters for kids that were still working on um, building smaller words. And then we've used some shaving cream this year as well. Up on top of my cart, I keep a few things that really help my small groups run smoothly. So one of them is this rainbow light. If the light is on, then the other students know I am with a group and not available. So I've made it really clear that if it's not an emergency and the light is on, they are on their own during that time. I also have this little timer here that helps me keep track of my groups and I like that it kind of ticks down. That way I can tell how much time I have left and then some of the other tools that I use, just like these little highlighters, these ones are actually erasable. I'm pretty sure these ones came from Walmart. So they have a highlighter side and then an eraser side, which the kids get a kick out of. And then some of my other just pencils and pens and things. On the other side of my small group table, I have a couple of systems that have worked pretty well this year. So this first one is this ro rolling cart. This one is from Michaels as well. And originally I had this all labeled up to be by subject and that didn't really work out that well. So what I've currently been doing is having just a day or stuff, one drawer for each day. So like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and that's been working a lot better. I never got around to relabeling it. 
I just know which day is which. But if I were going to use that again next year, I would definitely relabel it with the days of the week because that worked out a lot better for me. Next to that is where we keep all of our supplies. So I do have flexible seating in my classroom. And so all of the supplies is kept here to be shared um, communally. So in each supply caddy, and big forewarning, these are May supply caddies, so they've been well loved. Um, but each supply caddy has some pencils, the scissors match the color of the caddy, and so do the crayon boxes. The white ones should be people color crayons. It looks like these ones kind of still are. And then they also have some glue sticks and erasers in there. Behind the caddies live our colored pencils and markers. So you see that those match the color of each one. In the past, when I have assigned seats, this has made it a lot easier to say like green group and all of their stuff is green. Makes it a lot easier to keep it together. The other must have if you are going to do flexible seating are some good book bins. So I absolutely love these ones. They are just clear like file holders off Amazon. And these have been awesome. I've had them for two or maybe three years and they've held up really, really well. I just have these little numbers from schoolgirl school style that I just slid down in the front. And these hold all of our, like these are our fluency folders and writing folders, morning journals. Usually our center folders would be in here as well. Um, and that helps it stay pretty organized. My one recommendation if you are going to do book bins is have a couple places in your room where they're stored. So I actually have about half of them here, one through 11 are here, and then the other half are over here all the way across the room on this side lost some of these numbers but this really helps when you send kids to get things from their book bins and they're not all headed to one spot so that would definitely be a recommendation and in the past I've even split it up more and had like four places we kept book bins so that would definitely be something I would recommend doing right next to our book bins we have our pencil sharpener and these little buckets so i really liked this system as well sorry they're kind of hard to see with the glare but this one says ready to write so these pencils are sharp and ready to go sharp and please and colored pencils so this is nice if the sound of the pencil sharpener going all day drives you crazy like it does me the kids just put them in the sharp and please bucket and then um, grab a new one and somebody goes at the end of the day to sharpen them all this is my classroom library. One of my big goals for this year that I honestly just never got around to was organizing this a little bit better. So in the past, each of my book bins has had like a picture label on the front and then on the back of each book, there was a matching sticker that went with it. So like I would have my whale stickers on all the books that have to do with the ocean same sticker would be on the bin and then kids would know just to set it in that bin and that worked super super well in first grade when i moved to second grade i moved schools so i took all my books left their books and then ended up buying a bunch of chapter books for second graders and i just never got around to relabeling these bins and labeling all of the new books off to the left side of my whiteboards i have my hand signals and voice level lights these hand signals are something that i've used every year the kids just show me whatever hand signal of the thing that they need so bathroom tissue water pencil or question and then i can do a yes or a weight with my hand and it keeps us from having to stop class for all of those questions that you get a thousand times throughout the day so it's nice to have those little hand signals i would definitely recommend that the voice level lights i'm sure you've seen on instagram or pinterest they're all over the place but you have the levels that their voices should be at and then if you're doing something let's say where they should be whispering then you just tap the light turn that one on and they know to have whisper voices i use this a lot at the beginning of the year when we were practicing what voice levels were appropriate for each activity under the whiteboards i have my my stage and this is something that my husband and my dad actually built for me in my previous classroom I did not have hardly any storage at all so this was a great place to put some of those bigger things that I was trying to store both sides of the stage do actually open up so it's just a wood box basically with hinges at the back and then a big lid and it's a great spot to keep that bigger stuff like for next year's classroom or chart paper things like that 
I do wish that that lid had a way to stay open. It can get a little heavy, but other than that, they're great. Then on top of the stage, I have some of our flexible seating items. Some of the choices that I give kids are scoop rockers, pillows. We also have some wobble stools under these tables. Those are probably my most popular choice. These little metal stools that are a little bit lower. Um, these stools are from Ikea. They definitely hold up way, way better than the colorful Amazon ones. So if you're in the market for stools, I would definitely grab the Ikea ones over the Amazon ones. Um, and then we also have some lap desks. So the lap desks live here. Throughout the day, kids are welcome to choose the spot that works best for them. Oops, and I forgot too, I have these little cushions for the coffee table that they can sit on the floor. Um, they are welcome to choose a spot that works best for them. This group is very, very chatty. Like I think a lot of our groups are this year. So they have assigned seats for some of the day so that they are able to get that work done. We also, and I've done this almost all four years that I've taught, anything, any new learning that we're doing happens on the rug. My very first year, I tried to have student desks and like stand at the front of the room and talk while everybody was in their desk and they just never were listening. Like they were playing with stuff in the desk or talking to their neighbors or I was too far away. Um, so having everybody come over to the carpet gives good close proximity, prevents distractions too because they're not, they don't have all the stuff that they would have at their table to play with. These two baskets hold our clipboard slash whiteboard. So I actually bought a class set of these this year and they obviously are a clipboard, but they also have a whiteboard surface. So they've taken pretty good care of most of them. They're getting a little beat up around the edges, but they've held up pretty well. So we keep our markers and our erasers in these boxes with them or in these baskets. And then when the kids come up, they just make two nice lines, get what they need and then turn. I call it a one way street. So just like I said with the book boxes, have Having two separate places to store these helps with that kind of traffic jam a lot. Also have our score chart for Beat the Teacher. So this actually goes with these little 10 frames that I have on this side of the board. And when we are transitioning, I count down from 10. If I get to zero and everybody's ready to go, then the class gets a magnet. If they're not, then I get a magnet. And whoever fills their 10 frame first, if it's me, we just reset and start again. If it's the class, then they get an X over on this side. And then when they fill the whole row, they get a popsicle party, second row, root beer floats. And so I've liked this because it takes a while for them to get that prize because they have to fill the whole 10 frame and then fill the row as well. Even higher up above our board, we have our TV. We also have our new clocks. So as you can see, these words used to say time to be kind when we had a circular analog clock, but recently they came in and replaced our analog clocks with the digital ones. And I just haven't had a chance to take the words down or come up with some sort of other O. Um, so it is what it is for right now. And then also on this side of the board, we have our number of the day. So at the beginning of the year, I was picking a number every day. We were doing the place value in those boxes. And then I had some magnetic coins that we were putting in the piggy bank. We kind of stopped doing that as we moved um, into different skills and the kids weren't really needing to do that basic number of the day work, but I would have liked that I think in first grade. That's something I wish I had done then. I have my big 120 chart hanging on this easel. This is one of my favorite purchases for math because you can turn the cards around. So like right now we're working on counting by threes to get ready for multiplication, um, but I've used it for fives, tens, twos, all of that. This easel came from Lakeshore and it actually used to be red. So I spray painted this this summer, this gray color. I'll probably need to touch up some spots. Um, but for the most part, it's holding up pretty well. It has a white board side on this side and then also a lined side on the back. So that's nice because I can just flip it around if I want to use that lined side if we're doing writing or mentor sentences or things like that. This classroom has a ton of whiteboards. So I have these two big ones at the front and then I have two more big whiteboards over on this wall. Again, my last classroom, I had just one little tiny one, so that's why I bought this easel. Over in this corner, I have 
my little writing area. So the rest of the secret stories are up here. Our writing center is in these cabinets here, which I'll talk about in just a second. And then the rest of our book bins. The other thing that lives on this shelf are our centers. So right now I actually kind of have like mobile centers. I would love to have a more like stationary center for all of them like I do for writing, but for now having these little mobile ones works pretty well. They have word work, they come get the sign and the basket and they just bring it over to the word work table. Handwriting happens at this middle table. The writing center is all over here. And then during that time, the aide works with a group back at this table. Um, these kids are on Epic listening to books being read. At the coffee table is where they do that fluency center or heart words. Um, and then on the carpet or at these tables, they are working on two other online programs and then reading in the library. I'll do a video sometime before the end of the year explaining how I do my centers and what I do during that center time. Over on this wall, I have two more whiteboards. On the far side here, we have our schedule. So this is the schedule ready for Mondays. Come in at 8.20, the kids get right to work on their morning journal. So after I have checked off their book bag and bee binder, they put it away in their book bin and they start in on their morning journals. Then at 8.30, we all come over to the carpet and make a big circle around the outside of the carpet for morning meeting. During morning meeting, I just read like a morning message off the TV. It's part of my daily PowerPoint. And then we share good things. So they take turns raising their hand and a few kids get to share something good that's going on. I love doing that because it gives the kids a chance to share things they might not otherwise tell you about and it keeps a really positive vibe to start the morning. Then we jump straight into phonics. After phonics at nine o'clock, I have a handful of kids that go to ELD at that time. So we start centers and it says math centers there. We actually start out with working on a program called Reflex that's math fact fluency. And then as soon as they're done with that, then they go straight into their reading centers. So it's kind of math, but mostly reading centers. We get a morning recess and then right after recess, they go to PE or music. And then when we come back, I typically do a read aloud or we work on some sort of writing that we've been doing. We go back into reading centers, finish up reading center time before lunch. And then after lunch, we actually do like a walk to math among all the second graders. So they're in leveled groups. They go back to recess and then after recess we have a little chunk of time where we can kind of fit in the extra um, science or social studies or art above this whiteboard i have a number line with the words and the 10 frames and then my alphabet strip so i'll link both of these below they're both off of tpt over on this board i have my syllable types and then our class promises live over here in the corner as well We've made it almost all the way back around. So over here in the corner, I have my little mini fridge. I like that this one has a refrigerator and a freezer. Up in the freezer, I keep some like backup freezer lunches, but also some extra ice packs so that kids don't have to go to the nurse every time they need one. And over here, right by the door, I keep the rest of our bathroom system. So after kids have done the sign, they've gotten a yes, you can go. Then they come on over, click the light, and then that tells me that somebody is out in the girls' bathroom. When they come back, they just click it right back off. All right, guys, I think that about covers it. I will do my very best to link everything in the description, but if there's anything that you would like to know more about, please don't hesitate to ask in the comments. If this video was helpful for you, please remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so that you don't miss my next one. We can also stay in touch over on Instagram at the Literacy Teacup. See you soon.